Hey guys, my name is Thatcher and today I'm going to be starting out my DCTL coding series. So in this video, we're going to be going through a few different topics, specifically uh, the prerequisites, what DCTLs are, where to find documentation and overall coding methodology. We're going to write up a useful uh, color inversion DCTL, uh, how to install it and how to debug it. And in the following videos, we'll be doing other kinds of useful exercises with DCTLs in order to cover the various topics and how it differs from existing languages like C or OSL. Before we begin, you're going to need to have DaVinci Resolve Studio. DCTLs are not supported in the free version. You're going to need a text editor. What I have here is Visual Studio Code. Sublime Text would also work. Um, for my series in particular, you're going to need some programming experience, ideally in a language like C or Python or Java or JavaScript. Any of those will do well, but if you're familiar with really any existing programming language, you'll have decent odds. And finally, you're going to need some amount of patience in order to uh, sit through trying to debug these different DCTLs. It's not exactly the most transparent kind of system. You can't just step through it one line at a time and see what all the values are. So. Sometimes bugs are a little tougher to debug. If you do not have programming experience, I would like to point you to Cower Hendrickson's DCTL course that he's producing right now. We'll put a link to the first video in the top right corner. All right, with all that being said, let's hop into what a DCTL is. So DCTL is short for DaVinci Color Transform Language. Effectively, by using this DCTL language, you can write your own plugins and color tools so that you can do things that are not natively supported in Resolve. If that sounds like something you'd want to make, then hopefully this series will be useful for you. In order to successfully program in any language, you're going to need access to the documentation. So where's the documentation for DCTLs? Unfortunately, you can't just easily find it on Google. Instead, the documentation is provided in DaVinci Resolve. So let's see where to pull that up. We're going to start out by opening up Resolve, and we'll go up to the Help button up here. You'll then go to Documentation, and then to Developer. This will open up this folder over here, and inside this Developer folder, you're going to want to go to DaVinci CTL, and then look at the readme.txt. Let's drag this readme.txt into Visual Studio so that we can see what is inside. So here I've opened up the README with all the documentation. There's quite a bit of information about what kinds of DCTLs there are and the different variations and data types and ways to define functions and pointers and useful things like that. Um, we're going to be going through a lot of this material over the course of this series. However, you should use this text document as reference uh, whenever you're actually coding something yourself. And right now, before starting to write a DCTL of our own, I would like to kind of cover my broad approach to programming in order to try to make it, say, less difficult and less challenging. So effectively, we're going to have four steps. So first, you're going to really think deeply about the problem and try to understand how to conduct the specific operation that you're trying to do. And try to like write out the math on pen and paper really quickly or perhaps build together a tree in Fusion or in the color page that exemplifies the math that you want to exist or want to recreate. Once you've figured out the steps that you're going to need, you're going to write in your code and comments the order of operations and kind of pseudocode it out so that you can break up the overall task into small digestible steps. Then for each comment, you're going to replace it or write perhaps just below it the actual code that executes those instructions. And finally, we're going to debug. Now, one thing I would like to highlight is that steps three and four here are somewhat iterative. If you were to write all of the code at once and then send it into Resolve and then try to debug the whole thing, for very large DCTLs, that could actually become quite difficult to do the debugging because there are just so many problems at once and you can't really figure out which steps contain the bugs and things like that. So I would strongly recommend that you cut up a little bit, test it, code up a bit more, test it, and so on, so that you have good confidence that your code is actually working. With that, let's try to hop into Resolve, and we're going to make a DCTL that inverts the colors of the frame. So if you're in Resolve right now, if we were in the color page, we could very easily actually just invert colors. All you do is go into the custom color tools. We're going to move this left thing to the top and the right control point to the bottom, and we can see this is the result that I want to get. This approach does work, but it does require a few clicks. There's perhaps some imprecision here in terms of 
where these points end up. So let's make a DCTL that actually just does this in a single operation. I'm going to start off by making a text file that ends with .dctl. So I'm going to call it DCTL tutorial uh, zero inverse. And it is simply a text file that ends with .dctl as we can see over here. The next thing we're going to do is in the bottom right here, this also exists in Sublime Text. If it says plain text around here, what you're going to do is you're just going to click where it says plain text and then replace it with C or C sharp. This will improve our uh, syntax highlighting that we have for our DCTLs. I'm going to split it so that I can see the readme on one side and my text file on the other. And at this point, I would like to highlight that, as it says in the documentation, there are two main kinds of DCTLs. There's one kind that is a transform which effectively takes in an image and it will output another image. And it doesn't just take in a single image, it actually takes in the current pixel in an image. And then it'll output the corresponding color for the same pixel in the output image. There's another kind of DCTL called the transition DCTL that allows you to implement things like cross dissolves and other sorts of transition effects. In this overall series, we're gonna be focusing on this first kind, the transform DCTL. If you've ever programmed in another language, you'll typically see that there's a function called main in which we enter the program. In the case of DCTLs, particularly for transform DCTLs, we'll instead enter the program with a function called transform. If we search the readme, we can find the transform function. Uh, there are two possible signatures for it, and for the purpose of this specific DCTL, we're going to be using the first one. Both transform functions take as input the image width, height, the current pixel's x and y coordinates. But the difference between the two is that one of them takes in the current color of the pixel that is at this x, y coordinate. And the other one takes in these uh, texture structs that you will have to index into to pull out the color of the current pixel. But this allows you to do other kinds of spatial operations in which perhaps you're flipping an image or doing something like that. You can refer to a different location within these three color layers. We're going to go ahead and use the first version of the transform function. At this point in time, I would like to highlight X and Y are going to go from zero to the width or height. The width, for example, for a 1080p image will be 1920, and the height will be 1080. And PX will be some number between zero and 1919, and PY will be a number between zero and 1079, inclusive. X, of course, goes horizontally across the frame and will be zero on the left edge. PY will span the vertical range of the frame and will be zero on the top row. All right, as I discussed before, we've got four steps for how to actually write the code. So the first one is gonna be figure out what you want to code. And I've decided here that we're gonna be coding up a color inverse. Next, we're gonna flesh out the math on paper as well as we can. So the math I'm just gonna tell you straight up is just gonna to be to take the current RGB value and we're gonna subtract them from one. So we're going to write up the order of operations as pseudocode in the comments. We're going to make a comment with a double slash, just as you would in Java or C. We're going to write out this instruction as a comment. Next up, we're going to actually implement this as code. So we can see the transform function here takes in all these different parameters that we already discussed, and it returns a type called float3. I'm going to take float3 and search for it in the readme, and we see here that there are three different kinds of types beyond just floats, ints, shorts, chars, and these sorts of things. We have float2, float3, and float4. These are effectively just structs that contain two, three, or four different floats. We have utility functions called make float2, make float3, and make float4. In order to make the float3 that we will return from our transform function, we're going to be using make float3. So I'm going to declare a float three called out and I'm going to assign to it make float three and I'm going to say 1.0 minus PR 1.0 minus PG that's the green channel and 1.0 minus PB the blue channel and then I'm going to return out all right let's go ahead and install this DCTL the way we install a DCTL is simply by moving it to our LUT folder or within a directory within our LUT folder. Now, where is our LUT folder? We're going to go to Resolve, open up the LUT panel if you haven't already. 
and I've already made a folder within my Let's folder called DCTL Tutorial. But let's go ahead and open that up and take a look at it in the Finder. So in here, you can see that I'm in uh, this directory within my LUT folder. I have, this, I have this folder called DCTL Tutorial. And I'm going to take my DCTL that I wrote here, and I'm just simply going to copy it in to that folder. There we go. Next up, because I've added a new DCTL to Resolve, I'm going to go ahead and restart Resolve. We can see that now that I've restarted Resolve, I've gotten this error message, error processing DaVinci CTL, with, this, uh, with our DCTL being pointed out here. That's because I'm missing a semicolon, but I'll show you how to go through the logs to determine that. In order to actually use a DCTL, though, you would have to uh, apply it in one of two places. Either you can simply drag and drop the DCTL onto a node. I'm going to go ahead and reset our custom curve or disable our custom curve node. So you could simply just drag it on like this, or you can use the DCTL resolve effects color effect, and then simply apply it from the drop down menu here, like so. Now this DCTL is doing nothing right now, and that's because it has failed to compile. Now, how do we actually determine that it has failed to compile? Well, other than that error message that we saw earlier, we're going to take a look at the logs. The logs are going to exist in one of four different directories, depending on what platform you're on, and depending on, I believe, when it is that you installed DaVinci Resolve. So let's go over to the where logs slide here, and basically I've listed out the four different directories. There are two potential locations on Mac OS and two potential locations on Windows. So in my case, on this M1 MacBook, my log directory is within this folder. So it's within my user directory. This library folder is a hidden folder. Um, or it could be within the very most rootmost directory on the file system. Similarly, on Windows, it could be in program data, or it could be in this hidden app data directory. I've gone ahead and found this folder already, and I've saved it within my sidebar. I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal within this folder so that I can take a look at the logs. So here we can see I've got a terminal open inside the logs directory, and I'm going to use a command called tail. So I'm going to type tail dash F, F is for follow. And I'm going to say tail dash F DaVinci resolve dot log. I believe you can also use the resolve debug dot text if you would enjoy that instead. On Windows, this process would look slightly different. What you're going to do on Windows is you're going to hold Shift and you're going to right click within the folder in Explorer and you'll have an option that's called Open Linux Shell here. Once you've opened it up, you can use the same tail-f command. Let's hit Enter and take a look. And we'll see that it'll spit out maybe the last 10 lines or so. However, if we go over to Resolve, um, we've got this kind of opened up within the Resolve OFX panel, and I'm going to click Reload and Alt-Tab back in. So now we get a full update of what our error message is. And we can see the error. Expected a semicolon at the end of this line that begins with float3 out. Let's go back into Visual Studio Code, open up our DCTL, and put the missing semicolon back in. We're going to save it and copy it back over to our LUT folder. I have the LUT folder open right over here. We're going to copy and paste it back in, overwriting the old file. Go back to Resolve, hit Reload, and we do indeed see that our image is inverted. So we have successfully implemented the DCTL. Just to show you the other way of running a DCTL, if we reset this node, we'll have to refresh the LUT directory and then drag and drop it we can see that it does indeed work. OK, that's about all I've got today. We went through what DCTLs are, and we've written up a very basic DCTL so that you can get situated and get started coding it. We've covered where the documentation and the logs are so that you can help yourself when coding and be capable of debugging these DCTLs. I'll see you in the next video.